expressed on this program do not necessarily reflect the views of the station, its employees, or ownership. But they should. <clears throat> we hope that as you're studying God's Word, we will convince you that these are the views that you need to have and uh, the, in order to agree with the Bible. Friends, thank you for watching. James over here with you on the Word of the Lord, and we are so glad you're with us to study God's Word tonight. Always, as always, we want to put our content information up for you, uh, wordandlord at gmail.com. 276-340-2653 is how you can reach me, and we hope that you will take advantage of that. We'll be glad to give you out any uh, of the things that we do in this program, free DVDs, books, um, muscle and shovel are free to you. If you will just let us know, we'll get one out to you. We want you to study God's Word with us, and, and we invite you uh, cordially to <clears throat> come and study with us. Our two the Boulevard is where we assemble there in Eden. And on Sundays at, eight, at 9 a.m., 9 a.m. on Sundays for a class. We have worship at, at 10 a.m., then Bible studies on Thursday nights at 7 p.m. And uh, so we hope that you'll come out and study with us and uh, uh, l study God's Word, learn with us, and uh, grow with us. We're, we're trying to do all that we can to get the, the gospel out, and we want you to take advantage of uh, the opportunities you can to study with us. We want to just study the Bible, I'm talking to a gentleman today and, and we were talking about all the different churches and, and uh, you know, it's, it's the same thing to everybody we talk to. We just want to get back to the Bible. You know, let's, let's let the Bible be the guideline and if it's for us to do today, then we're going to do it. If it's authorized in the New Testament, we're going to do it. And so that is why we are, we're trying to get people to study. So many denominations out here, hear so, you hear so many different things about what God's will for you is, but yet... No one can really show what they, uh, why they say what God's will is for them from the Bible. They, do, they can't open a book and show it, but we want to show it. We want you to demonstrate why you believe what you believe. We'll do the same from, from the Bible in order to uh, make sure that we're right with God. Friends, tonight I want to say something that probably uh, you won't, you never expected me to say, but in light of all the things that are going on in the news, uh, House Bill 2 here in North Carolina, the bathroom bill, as you, as you may have heard it called, the, uh, the, the pro-LGBT, lesbians, gays, bi, transgenders, whatever, alphabet soup, all the individuals that are, that are uh, coming out of the woodwork in order to protest and, and try to get gay rights and whatever, uh, I've come to the conclusion that, you know what, God wants us to be gay. God wants us all to be gay. But not that way. Not the way you're thinking. Not the way that term is used in today's society. But friends, God does want us to be gay, but not this way. Now, I say that because you may be saying, well, how in the world did you come up with that conclusion? Well, friends, here's why. I said that because I want to shock you and get your attention because this is what the world would really have us to believe, is that God wants us all to be gay in the homosexual way, that God wants us to be at least accepted, to accept it as normal or as okay in his eyes in order that they can do what they want to do. But I submit to you that God does want us to be gay, but not this way. As a matter of fact, he wants us to be even gayer than the word implies in our language. Here's what I mean by that. The Bible says that we are to be happy or that we are to be blessed. And that's what gay means. You know, it used to be that when people said gay, it meant being happy. It meant being joyful, excited. It was, it was a, a, a term of merriment. It was a term that, that showed people were were, were happy and, and maybe carefree, didn't worry about things. It uh, may apply to uh, something uh, very uh, bright and festive, you might say. But now it's turned into a derogatory term. It's turned into a word that actually means something sinful, that denotes something that God would not approve of. God does not want us to be gay in the sense that people use the term today. But when the Bible talks about being happy, it actually uses a term that, that says be happy. And so that, in that sense, yeah, we're to be gay. But actually, it's more than that. Listen to this. In, in Psalm 1 and verse 1, 
Psalm 1, verse 1. I want you to notice what the Bible says. Psalm 1 and verse 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of scornful. Now, look at this verse. The very first word, blessed, blessed, actually means to be happy. But it's not just a term, be happy. It's actually uh, an, 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 uh, uh, an exclamation. It's actually a proclamation. You know, happy. The man is happy. You know, with the exclamation point. He's rejoicing. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. And this is what the Bible is talking about when, or this is what I'm talking about when the Bible says God wants us to be happy. He wants us to be blessed, and thus he wants us to be full of joy. But there's a way that he wants us to be joyful. There's a way that we can have the joy. There's a way that we can have these blessings and be ultimately happier than anyone else and living any other life. But it has to come from following what God says on how to be happy. Now the world would tell us, the world would tell us be happy, you know, however you feel. But notice this, when we're talking about the word blessed, we're talking about the word blessed, I want you to notice this. It's translated happy in other places. In Psalm 128, for example, Psalm 1, 28, Psalm 128, and look at verse 1. This is a song of degrees. Blessed is everyone that feareth the Lord, that walketh in his ways. For thou shalt uh, eat the labor of thine hands. Happy shall thou be, and it shall be well with thee. The word happy in this, word, in this verse and blessed in the first verse are the same word. Happy, blessed. Friends, if you, if you realize, if you truly understood the blessings that God has for all mankind, you would be happy if you partook of them, if you actually had access to them. In Ephesians 1 verse 3, the Bible says that we have been given, God has given us all things, or all spiritual blessings in heavenly places, in Christ Jesus. Now, that's where all the blessings are. That's where the true happiness really is. It's in Christ Jesus. And there is a way, a means by which we can obtain that blessedness or that happiness. Look at Psalm 144. Psalm 144. And we're going to look at verse 15 here. Psalm 144. And verse 15. Happy is that people that is, in a, that is in such case. Yea, happy is that people whose God is the Lord. Now, we're talking about being happy. We're talking about being blessed. And I'm talking about being gay in the sense of being happy and overjoyed, uh, having a, a celebratory outlook on life being full of, of, of merriment because of the rejoicing and the joy that we have. Friends, that's, that's really what we're talking about here. And so if you, if you think about the Bible and what God has in store for us, friends, there is a reason why we should be joyful, why we should say there is a blessing, we can be blessed. But it's not the way the world looks at it. I want to show you, friends, I want to demonstrate tonight that the world tells us that happiness can come from doing whatever you feel like. Happiness, the world says, comes from doing, you know, whatever. Maybe you break out of your, out of your shell and you want to come out of the closet and you just want to, you know, you want to do whatever you want to do. You want to dress however you want to dress. You want to act however you want to dress. You live whatever lifestyle you want to live. And that's, that's happiness. That's freedom. That's what the world says. But I submit to you, friends, that happiness does not come the way the world says you'll have it. Let me give an example. Many of you know, many of you know that, uh, you know, to all the news, I don't think you can't help know it, you know, last year or so, uh, Bruce Jenner, uh, 
is, is now a, a woman or becoming a woman, transgendering into a woman. And he's getting breast implants and he's starting to look like a woman dressed in women's clothing and, you know, he's got woman's hair and woman's makeup. And, and he, you know, he said to Barbara uh, Wawa, brother, Barbara Walters there, you know, I just, I don't want my, I want let my nails, the paint on my nails chip and, you know, just be like a regular woman, I guess, whatever. I, I don't know. I don't understand that. But you know what the world says? The world celebrates that. The world says, well, he's, he, you know, we're encouraging that. We're encouraging him to, to be who he wants to be, do what he wants to do, and let him find true happiness. Friends, you want? <clears throat> you won't find true happiness like that. You won't find true happiness like that. I want you to notice uh, an article, and I don't think I can put it up there and read it to you. I will try. Let me just see if I can pull it over there for a minute. I don't think I can read it when I have it on my screen over here. Yeah, there's no way I could read that. Um, but this is an article that was written by a, a, uh, a, um, a professor and about um, this type of behavior, the transgender uh, transgenderism. And uh, listen to what he says. Now, this is, this is from last year, actually. He says, The idea that one's sex is a feeling, not a fact, has permeated our culture and is leaving casualties in its wake. Gender dysphoria should be treated with psychotherapy, not surgery. Now, what does he mean by that? means it's not a physical condition. It is a mental condition. It's a mental condition. He says, for 40 years at the university, distinguished service professor of psychiatry at Johns Hopkins Medical School, 26 of which are also spent in, as psychiatrists in chief of Johns Hopkins Hospital, psychiatrist in chief of Johns Hopkins Hospital, I've been studying people who claim to be transgender. Over that time, he says, I've watched the phenomenon change and expand in remarkable ways. So he says for the past uh, you know, 40 years, he sees people that come through and they want to be transgender. They want to change the gender from which they were born. Now notice this. He says a rare issue uh, of a few men, both homosexual and heterosexual, including some who sought sex change surgery because they were erotically aroused by the thought or image of themselves as women, has spread to include women as well as men. So it's even, it's becoming more and more uh, uh, popular, you might say, because more and more people are hearing about it and doing it and saying, well, uh, this, is, this is where I am. And they're thinking, remember, it's, it's psychotic here, they're thinking that they are a woman trapped in a man's body or a man trapped in a woman's body. He says, even young boys and girls have begun to present themselves as of the opposite sex. Over the last 10 or 15 years, the phenomenon has increased in prevalence seemingly exponentially. That means it's just blown up. Now, almost everyone has heard of or met such a person. Well, that's true. Nearly everyone has heard of it because of people like Bruce Jenner. I think before that you had Cher, the singer Cher, her, her daughter, son, is it her son became a daughter or her daughter became a boy? I can't remember what, I think it was, uh, I think the daughter became a boy. I, I don't remember. Well, they're still a boy or girl, however they were born. That's where they stay. But I want you to listen to what he goes on to say this. He says, the champions of this, encouraged by their alliance to the, uh, with the broader LGBT movement claim that whether you are a man or a woman, a boy or a girl, is more of a disposition or feeling about yourself than a fact of nature. See that? You see what trouble we get into when we start going to feelings and I just feel happy or I don't feel happy, so therefore I must not be, you know, this is what I need to do to be happy. The world says change in order to be happy. It says and much like any other feeling, it can change at any moment and for all sorts of reasons. Friends, how many times have you felt bad, you felt down, you felt gloomy, 
And then someone comes along, gives you a call or whatever. You get a letter from someone you hadn't heard from or your phone call from someone you hadn't heard of or something happens. And you just, man, all of a sudden you just perked up. And now you're, now you're great. Is that how our genders change? Really? It changed on how you feel at any given t uh, time or moment. He says, therefore, no one could predict who would swap this fact of their makeup or could justifiably criticize such a decision. Now listen to what he says. At Johns Hopkins, at Johns Hopkins, after pioneering sex change surgery, we demonstrated that the practice brought no important benefits. Having a sex change did not bring any benefits, he says. As a, uh, as a result, we stopped offering that form of treatment in the 1970s. So here, the, here they are, Johns Hopkins University offering sex change operations. In the 1970s, they stopped doing it because they saw it did no good. It did not benefit the person whatsoever. Well, here we are, 40 years later, Actually, I guess it's more like, uh, what, 50 years later, and we still haven't learned. It's like, like John Hopkins was way ahead of the curve. This does no good, they said. We stopped offering that. We stopped giving a sex change operation because it doesn't do any good. And he says, our efforts, though, had little influence on the emergence of this new idea about sex and upon the expansion of the number of, quote, unquote, transgendered among the young and old. Well, why not? Why not? Well, no one was talking about it back in the 70s. Why? Because it wasn't very prevalent. But now you've got the, the push, the, the gay movement, the, the LGBT movement, the, uh, you know, the, the NAMBLA movement. The, the, that's the, Nash, the North American Man Love Boy Association. Yeah, that's pedophiles. You know, they're all pushing this, pushing it, pushing the, the, uh, the, the, the sex card, if you will, on our kids at a young, young age to desensitize them to the idea of, of sex, get them used to talking about it and demonstrating it. And so pretty soon our whole society is, is over-sexed, all right? And then they start questioning how they feel because there is no uh, uh, ground rules. There's no, there's no standard for what's right and wrong anymore. Our moral moorings have gone astray. And so he says now it's just it's exploded all over the place, even though we demonstrated back in the 1970s, it doesn't do any good. It doesn't do any good. He says, uh, let's see, the history may clarify some aspects of the latest high-profile transgender claimant. Bruce Jenner, the 1976 Olympic decathlon champion, is turning away from his identity as one of the world's greatest Male athletes, Jenner announced recently that he identifies as a woman and with medical and surgical help is busy reconstructing his physique. Now he says, I have not examined Jenner, but his behavior resembles that of some of the transgender males we've studied over the years. <clears throat> These men want to display themselves in ways wearing provocative female garb. More often than not, while claiming to be a woman in a man's body, they declared themselves to be le lesbians, that is, attracted to women. Well, of course they're attracted to women. They're still biologically a man. Duh. You know, really? That's, that's a no-brainer. We see how we change, we change the uh, definition of words all the time, so, you know, might as well. And he says, uh, uh, this idea... Of, of, of changing is very, very, very dangerous. And he says, we need to be like, the, I'm paraphrasing here, we need to be like the young boy in the emperor's new clothes, exposing the fact that this is really not helping. This is really not helping people. Now, uh, he says, first let's address the basic assumption of the contemporary parade. The idea that exchange of one sex is possible. It's not possible. He says, it is starkly, nakedly false. Transgendered men do not become women, nor do transgendered women become men. All, including Bruce Jenner, all become feminized men or masculinized women, counterfeits or impersonators of the sex with which they quote-unquote identify in that lies their problematic future. Now, 
I want you to listen to what he says next. And I've got this up on the screen. Here's what he says next about these individuals who are transgendered. And I'm, I'm putting this in the context of, are they really happy? Are they really happy? Notice what he says. He says, most, let me get here I read it here. He says, the most thorough follow-up of sex reassigned people, all right? Very thorough follow-up on these sex reassigned people, people who have changed gender, transgendered. He said, extending over 30 years and conducted in Sweden, where the culture is strongly supportive of transgender, documents their lifelong mental unrest. Are you with me here? It documents mental unrest. They're not happy. They're not happy. All of these people that go through gender reassignment, transgendered operations, whatever you want to call it, they're not happy. Overall, they are not happy. Mental unrest. Look what he says. He says, 10 to 15 years after surgical reassignment, the suicide rate of those who had undergone sex reassignment surgery rose to 20 times that of comparable peers. What is that saying, friends? That's saying that the LGBT movement that's trying to shove homosexuality down our throats, the, the homosexual movement that's trying to shove their perverted lifestyle down our throats, that's, that's forcing society to accept a way of life that they want to engage in. When the, when the president says that uh, a state is violating civil rights, if they don't let guy, men go to ba in the bathrooms with girls, or they don't let boys use the locker rooms of girls, that is what is being forced on our society, and thus it's going to lead to more mental unrest. It's not going to lead to happiness. As a matter of fact, when you stop and consider the fact that about 0.3% of the population is transgendered, and yet it is being forced on the majority of society, that's 90, what, 99.7% or 99.07%, I guess you might say, of people are going to be unhappy because they're going to have this minor, minuscule sliver of society forcing their views on them. Now, do you really think it's going to make more people happy? Especially the people that go through this gender reassignment stuff. Friends, man does not know how to find happiness. They're looking for happiness. They're looking for it, but they're not going to find it. Not like that way, they're not going to find it. Now, when you stop and think about what the Bible says, the Bible clearly tells us that happiness is not going to be found looking in the material world, looking in the, uh, uh, you know, looking for things to satisfy the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. Listen to what Solomon said. If, if anyone was doing experiments at Solomon, in Ecclesiastes 2, he said, I said in my heart, go to now, I will prove thee with mirth, therefore enjoy pleasure, and behold, this also is vanity. I said of laughter, I said of laughter, it is mad, and of mirth, what doth it? What good is it to laugh all the time? What's a good comedy? He said, I sought in my heart to give myself unto wine, yet acquainting my heart with wisdom and to lay hold on folly till I might see, till I might see what that good for the sons of men which they should do. Now know what he says. Uh, Under the heaven and all the days of their life, I made me great works. I built me houses. I planted me vineyards. I made me gardens and orchards. I planted trees in them of all kinds of fruits. I made the pools of water to water therewith the wood that bringeth forth trees. He said, I got my servants and maidens and my servants uh, uh, born in my house and I had great possessions of great 
and uh, small cattle above all were in Jerusalem before me. Now notice he says, I gathered me, I gathered me also silver and gold and the peculiar treasure of kings and of the provinces. I get me more uh, men, I get me men singers and women singers and the delights of the sons of men as music, as uh, musical instruments and that of all sorts. So I was great and increased more than all that were before me in Jerusalem. Also my wisdom remained with me. And whatsoever mine eyes desired, I kept not from them. I withheld not my heart from my joy, for my heart rejoiced in all my labor, and this was my portion of all my labor. Then I looked on all the works that my hands had wrought, and on the labor that I had labored to do, and behold, all was vanity and vexation of spirit, and there was no profit under the sun. He said, I, I did all this. I did all stuff. I gave myself to wine, women, work. I built houses. I got great possessions. I had great treasures. And he said, where was I in the end? He said, it's all vanity. It didn't do me a lick of good. It didn't bring me happiness. That's what he's trying to find, trying to find happiness, friends. You can't find happiness. You can't find joy, friends. In satisfying the lust of the flesh. Oh, you can for a little while. But that will soon fade. Listen. The, the, the research on transgendered or surgical reassignment people. Oh, in, the, in 10 or 15 years after the fact, the suicide rate goes up. Now, you know what? It hasn't been a year. It hasn't been a year. And here's what the rumors are. Here's already the buzz coming out about Bruce Jenner. I refuse to call him by his girl's name. Bruce Jenner. Bruce Jenner is considering detransitioning in the next couple of years, author claims. Now, someone says, well, that's just, that's just a buzz to keep the hype going. I find it very interesting that the study, that study individuals who have gone through this operation shows that, yes, there is, there is a, a, a lack of happiness. There is remorse. There's regret. There's sorrow. There's unhappiness that comes along with this type of, of uh, surgery, and yet we're, we're told not to believe this. Here's what the article says. It says, one source confirmed to me uh, Bruce has made whispers of sex change regret, hinting she, he, might go back to being Bruce Jenner. Halpern told the, the entertainment website, the biographer said Jenner is allegedly interested in transitioning back for relationship reasons. Watch this. Because she's or he's still into women and wants to meet the right one. Can you imagine that? I'm going through a sex change operation to be a woman, but I'm still attracted to women. So I'm not want to change back to being a guy because I still like girls. Friends, you see how confused we are? See how mixed, messed up we are? Now, he's trying to find happiness. He's trying to find happiness. But he won't find it, friends. He won't find it. Now, it doesn't matter if he changes back or not. The odds are he will not be happy being a woman quote, unquote, a woman. He'll always be a man, but he won't be happy being this woman. And he will never be truly happy because the Bible tells us where true happiness comes, and it's not changing the gender with which you were born. It's not going to bring happiness. Studies show that it's not going to bring happiness. It's proven that it won't bring happiness, but yet people say, well, you know, you got to find happiness somewhere. Well, the Bible tells us where real happiness is. But friends, I find it very interesting that all of these, all these individuals that want to push a perverted lifestyle, a corrupt, perverted, backwards lifestyle, insist that they're trying to find happiness and insist that their happiness is a result of being mistreated by everybody else. Now think about that. 
They say, we're not happy because we can't get married. So they force marriage down our throats. They force the government to say, no, we, we, we accept you or we recognize you as married. All they wanted was just to be married. That's all they wanted, just to be married. So they got that. They're still not happy. They're still not happy. Now we've got, now we've got to have bathrooms right. They're not happy, friends. They're not going to be happy. They're not going to be satisfied with taking the bathrooms. What they're going to be satisfied with and happy with is when they destroy religion and remove it from society. When they get rid of this book because it condemns their lifestyle, when they are able to stop every mouth that opposes their lifestyle, then they might start to think about beginning to be happy. But they're not going to be happy. You know why? Because that's not where true happiness can be found. True happiness is not going to be found in their lifestyle. They will never truly be happy. And so I think it's, I think it's very interesting that these people have been given so much from society. They force their, <clears throat> their will and their desire on society, and yet they're still not happy. Here's, here's a good example. You may have heard about this. This is from, this is Mr. Jordan Brown. He's a so-called pastor. And he went to Whole Foods and bought a cake. And when he got home with the cake, it had a derogatory, homophobic term on it. The cake said, love wins, and right across the middle of it, right there, you might can see this. I'm going to go ahead and say the word because it's been... In the news, I mean, Westboro Baptists have championed this word right here, I guess you might say, but it says love wins, and then right in the middle it says fag. And he's all upset because, oh, he bought this cake, and, and he got home, and now he's distraught, he's crying, and, and on, uh, on, on, the, on the Internet you can see his eyes are all bloodshot and puffy where he's been crying, blah, 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 blah. Well, it turns out, friends, that he lied. Whole Foods baked the cake, but Jordan Brown faked the cake. He wrote that word on there. Now, I just, I, I knew, I knew pretty quickly that's just got to be fake. You know why? Friends, have you ever gone to a bakery and bought a cake, had them write something on a cake, and you buy the cake and you don't even look at it to see if everything's spelled right? You don't look at it to see if everything's on it just right? I mean, and plus it's got a big clear plastic picture window on the front like you can't look down and see what's on the cake and you wait till you get home to get mad about it well he had to admit he lied that he made it he was going to sue Whole Foods and instead Whole Foods said we're going to sue you you're running our reputation we're going to sue you that's when he that's when he apologized oh I, I admit it I made it up I made it up friends how miserable of a man, how miserable of a person it has to be to say, I'm going to fake, I'm going to fake someone writing something on my cake and then sue this store, sue this, this, this uh, store chain in order to get some money. That's miserable. That's a miserable life. He's a, he's a, he's a, he's a gay so-called pastor, so-called gay, so-called pastor. Well, how miserable, how miserable that he has to inflict his misery on other people. I wish Whole Foods would have just sued him into oblivion. I mean, just crushed him like a bug. Stop all this foolishness, you know? Homosexuals, they want to come in, they want to make a bakery, bake a cake. And the government says, yeah, you're going to bake it. Florists have to, have to make flowers. Picture takers have to, have to make pictures for homosexual ways. Yeah, we're just going to shove it down your throat. This guy, oh, yeah, I lied. I made it up. They should have sued him. The Bible says punishment against the evil deed because the punishment against the evil deed is not uh, exercised speedily. Therefore, the hearts of the son of men are set in them to do evil. Ecclesiastes 8.11. The reason why we're having this trouble, friends, because these folks just can't find happiness. They, they just can't be happy. They just can't be happy. You know why? 
Because sin will never bring <clears throat> happiness, not lasting happiness. It just won't do it. It will never bring lasting happiness. I want you to consider this. In Hebrews 11 and verse 25. Hebrews 11 and verse 25. Talking about Moses. Moses chose rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Moses knew that, you know what, this is all, it's not going to last forever. The pleasure of sin is always for a season. The lust of flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life, 1 John 2, 15 through 17. All that is in the world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. It's going to pass away. True happiness is not going to be found in sin. Now, you know, you see the beer commercials, all this is a good life, you know. You drink this beer, yeah, you get the, you get the women and you get the, the party and you get all the everything, cars and everything. That's the good life. It's not going to last forever. It's not true happiness. It's not really going to bring the satisfaction that, that you want. As a matter of fact, sin ultimately will make your way hard. Look at Proverbs. Proverbs 13 and verse 15. Good understanding giveth favor, but the way of transgressor, transgressors is hard. It's rough. It's a hard way to go. You know what? Friends, that's exactly right. Sin is not your friend. And living a sinful lifestyle is not the way to find happiness. Now, true happiness can be found. And God wants us to find true happiness. He wants us to be blessed. He wants us to be happy. But it's not going to be found in, in, a, in a sinful lifestyle. Now, the reason I say the way of transgression is hard is because consider this lifestyle that we're being told is supposed to be gay. The so-called gay lifestyle, the happy lifestyle, the cheerful lifestyle, you know, the flamboyant lifestyle. You know how miserable it is? There's just some statistics here. The suicide, suicide is the leading cause of death among gay and lesbian youth nationally. Again, someone says, well, that's because they get picked on. That's got to get bullied. Well, I'm not for bullying. But the bottom line is, friends, that is not the ultimate problem. The ultimate problem is they're choosing a lifestyle that is hard, that's difficult. 30% of gay youth attempt suicide uh, near the age of 15. Now think about that, friends. Where's the joy in being gay? It's not gay. It's not happy. It's not. Gays and lesbians are two to six times more likely to suicide than heterosexuals. Why? Because it's not happy. You won't really find happiness there. You don't really find happiness in this lifestyle. Now, you see what I'm talking about, friends? Is it really, is it really happiness? Now, God wants us to be happy, but it's not going to be found here. Almost half of the gay and lesbian teens state they have attempted suicide more than once. Almost half have said they have attempted suicide. Whoa, sounds like a real carefree and, you know, rainbows and unicorns and baby kittens kind of life, huh? It's being conservatively estimated that 1,500 gay and lesbian youth commit suicide every year. Friends, sin does not bring happiness. And especially this lifestyle does not bring happiness. Now, we could talk about other kind of lifestyles too. I mean, we could go, we could go to other lifestyles, not just the gay and lesbian 
lifestyle. We're just talking about shacking up. Someone said, well, me and, me and my woman, we, we happy. We should be shacked up for 30, 40 years. Really? No commitment there. You just living together, cohabitating. Watch these shows on TV, these police shows on TV. It was always fussing and fighting and carrying on. Where's the happiness? Now they're all drinking, right? They're all drunk. They fight each other. Watching one other day with, with my daughters. We was watching this show and I just observed. I said, you know what? Here's the police comes out to this domestic disturbance. The man and the woman beating each other up. They both got cuts and bruises on their face. House are destroyed. The police are trying to find out who did what. Neither one of them is going to blame the other one. They're drunk. He's asking, well, what did you do? Well, I picked up the VCR and chunked it, and he picked up the lamp and chunked it. And, and I said, just think about this. How miserable of a life it is. You get into a fight, you're drunk, you get into a fight, and you break all your stuff. Then you wake up sober, and then what? Well, you got a broke lamp and a broke DVD player and whatever else. That's miserable. All because you're trying to find happiness the way the world says happiness. Not gonna find it, friends. Not gonna find it that way. In Genesis 4 and verse 6, a fellow named Cain. Remember the story of Cain and Abel? Cain and Abel offer up a sacrifice to the Lord. Abel brought a firstling of the flock and the fat thereof, and Cain brought the first fruits, brought fruits of the ground. And God had respect unto Abel's sacrifice, but he didn't have respect unto Cain's. And Cain was wroth, and his countenance fell. He was mad. Why was he mad? Why wasn't he happy? You know why he wasn't happy? His own fault, his own choice. The Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth? Why is thy countenance fallen? How come you're not happy, Cain? Well, why aren't you happy? Why aren't you happy? Look what God says. He said, if thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lies at the door. Now, friends, I think this is very interesting here. God says to Cain, if you do well, you'll be accepted. You know what the world says? The world says we're going to do evil and you will accept it. No, friends, I'm not going to accept it. People who love righteousness aren't going to accept it. If they will do well, they'll be accepted. You mean to tell me you don't want to accept someone wearing leather and high heels and funky colored hair and walking around half naked in Walmart? No. No, I don't want, I don't want that to be socially accepted. I don't want that to be accepted. I don't want to accept gay parades running through town. I don't want to accept what all comes with it, the pedophilia and the diseases and all the, the brash, crude language and living. And I don't want to accept that. But if they will transform, you know, you're talking about being transgender, why don't you transform to a new creature in Christ? Then you can find true happiness. God told Cain, if you do well, if you do us well, won't you be accepted? Just recognize if you do what God says, then you'll be accepted. But they won't, they want God to accept them. And they want everyone else to accept them too. Friends, true happiness is only going to come from following God's word. That's all there is to it. Because his plan is the one that tells us how to find happiness. His, actual, his plan is actual, actually for man's happiness. You think God created man and intended for him to be miserable? God did not, God did not create man and intend for him to be miserable. Look at this in Psalm 119. Psalm 119 and verse 1. Blessed 
are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. There it is, happy. How happy are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord? You see the connection here? Happiness, blessedness comes from walking in the law of the Lord. Blessed are they that keep his testimony. Verse 2, blessed are they that keep his testimony and that seek him with a whole heart. Happiness comes from seeking God. Happiness comes from doing God's will. I believe David told Solomon if he'd keep the Lord's commandments, he'd be happy. He'd be happy. And so this is what we're talking about, friend. God had always intended for man to be happy. If man would seek his will. You know, men, mankind looks at happiness in one way and God looks at it another. Listen to what a lady said to Jesus in Luke eleven twenty seven. 27. It came to pass, as he spake these things, a certain woman of the company lifted up her voice and said unto him, now watch it, <clears throat> she said unto him, Blessed is the womb that bare thee and the paps which thou hast sucked. She said, oh, I bet your mom is happy. Blessed is the womb that bare you and the paps that gave you suck. And look what Jesus said. He said, Yea, rather, blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. You want to know what real blessing is, what real happiness is? It's hearing the word of God and keeping it. Friends, the reason why some of you out there are so miserable. So, well, man, things are not going right in my life. I'm not promising living the Christian life is always going to be easy. But you know what? It's easier because you have all the resources that help you get through the hard times. See? You have all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. <clears throat> you have all the things that can make you happy. Paul said it's the peace that passes all understanding, Philippians 4, verse 8. And yet, you're saying, well, man, life's terrible. My life is miserable. You know why? You just had not found true happiness. You haven't found happiness that comes from being obedient to the will of God. In Luke 12, Luke 12, verse 41, Then Peter said unto him, Lord, speakest thou this parable unto us, or even at all, or even to all? And the Lord said, Who then is faithful and wise, a faithful wise steward? whom his Lord shall make ruler over his household to give them their portion of meat in due season. Blessed is he is that servant whom his Lord when whom his Lord when he cometh shall find so him so, shall find so doing. You know who's blessed? The servant that's working when the Lord comes and finds him working like he should. Friends the reason why the child of God, the Christian, can be happy is because he's seeking happiness according to God's plan. He's seeking happiness according to God's plan. If, you, if you'd let the Word tell you how to be happy, you'd be happy. If you'd just let the Bible tell you how to be happy, you'll be happy. Listen to James 1, verse 25. James 1, and verse 25. Listen to what James says. He says, but whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, that's the book, that's the Bible, the mirror, mirror of the soul, whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. A doer of the work will be blessed in his deed. He'll be happy in what he's doing. He'll have pleasure in what he's doing. Here's, here's real happiness. Real happiness comes from, from obeying God. Real happiness comes from obeying God. Blessedness, happiness, friends, it's a spiritual condition. It's not a physical condition. Oh, there, you have physical happiness. You can have joy. But the real joy and peace and happiness comes from your spiritual man, 
that's what we're talking about here, friend. You see, the world, the world looks at at things going on around us and says, you know what? I'm gonna live a certain lifestyle. I'm gonna shack up with my girlfriend, I'm gonna get drunk on Friday night, you know. I'm gonna drive fast and live wild and that's gonna be happiness. It's not happiness, friend. It's not happiness. Happiness is a spiritual condition. Look at this in, in Romans 4, verse 7. Paul is quoting David. And he says, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven. There it is, that word, blessed. Happy. Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is a man whom the Lord will not impute sin. Blessed is a man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. If God adds sin to your charge, to your account, friends, you're not going to be happy. You're not going to be happy. But God has provided a way to remove those sins, to clear those sins. But if you don't follow his will, you won't find true happiness, friends. There are people all the time, well, I'm going I'm to come to church and I'm, when I get my life right. Friends, if you can get your life right without coming and worshiping God or being obedient to God, becoming a Christian, a member of the Lord's church, if you can, if you can uh, get your life together without seeking the Lord, you don't need the Lord. But if you want true happiness, you need, you need the Lord. If you want true happiness, you need to obey the gospel. Because it's a spiritual condition here we're talking about. Matthew 11 and verse 6. Matthew 11. In verse 6. John's disciples came and said, they asked Jesus. John was in prison. He sent his disciples to ask him, are you, are you the one that should come or do we look for another? Jesus answered and said unto them, Go and show John again those things which ye do hear and see. The blind receive their sight and the lame walk and the lepers are cleansed and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up. The poor have the gospel preached unto them. And blessed is he Whosoever shall not be offended in me. Are you going to stumble at Christ? Is Christ's teachings, are they too hard for you to obey? You know what? If you can do what God says, if you can do what Christ says, you'll be happy. You'll be happy. Jesus said, come unto me, all you that labor and heavy laden, I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lonely in heart, and you shall find rest to your souls. For my yoke is easy, my burden is light. Matthew 11, 28 through 30. You, you can have joy, you can have peace, you can have happiness. But friends, being blessed, being blessed is what God wants, but He only wants it, He only wants it, or He only gives it on His turn. You know what? In. Uh, 1 Peter 3 and verse 13. 1 Peter 3 verse 13. Listen to what Peter says. He says, And who is he? Sorry, that. 1 Peter 3, 14. But if you suffer for righteousness' sake, happy are ye. And be not afraid of their terror, and neither be troubled. You know what can give you happiness even in the midst of difficulties and hardships? It's righteousness. Even if you suffer for righteousness' sake, you can still be happy. You can still be blessed. That's right, friends. What to say? You can be gay. You, you'll be happy. You'll be able to say, you know what? I'm, I'm rejoicing. I'm overjoyed. Because I know I'm doing what's right. In 1 Peter 4 and verse 14, If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye. 
There's happiness. There's joy. Friends, I, I don't have any problem suffering as a Christian. I'm a member of the Lord's Church, the Church of Christ. It's the only church we wrote in this book. And I wear Christ's name. I'm a Christian. I'm not a Baptist, Methodist, Presbyterian, Lutheran, whatever. I'm a Christian. And there's true happiness. You know, I, I think the reason why a lot of these people that are mad and upset when we go and, and when you go and ask them why they believe what they believe, the reason why they get mad, because they're not really happy. Because they're not really a Christian. They're not really blessed. Friends, God's plan for blessedness is right here. His plan for happiness is right here. And God wants you to be happy. But you will only be happy if you obey the gospel, render obedience to his will, repent of your sins, confess Christ before man, and be baptized for the mission of sins. Then you'll find true happiness. Friends, we're going to wrap up. I want to let you know we love and appreciate you. If we can help you uh, to, if we can help you in any way, give us a call. Word from the Lord at gmail.com or 276 340 2653. Till next time, friends, we're out of time. Always remember to make sure that when someone's telling you the truth on how to be happiness, always make sure you're getting a word from the Lord. Have a good night.